Hi, I'm Bob Kovacs, and I'd like to demonstrate a technique that I use with Corel Video Studio X4. Now, this is not the latest version of Corel's Video Studio software. There's an X5 available. I'm using X4, and I use it to do a multi-camera editing technique to make videos that use multiple cameras. In this case, I'm going to be demonstrating the technique to use two cameras. I'll intercut between two cameras, and I'm making it a little more difficult for myself by also including a separate audio track. So I'm going to need to synchronize three elements, a main video track, an overlay video track, and a completely separate audio track. It's going to be a little complicated, but it really isn't that hard if you go at it step by step. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the song I'm going to do is a classical chamber music piece done by a local Virginia group called Virginia Virtuosi and they've invited a young fellow up from the audience to assist them by dropping a basketball on the floor. Now, after he accomplishes one or two drops, he gets a little nervous and he gives the basketball to a little young lady who finishes the rest of the song, and she does actually a pretty good job with the rest of the song. So you're not going to know that at the beginning, of course, but uh, during the process, we're going to see that happen. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I've got the clips that I need up here in my library. There is the audio clip, that's the first clip, and I've got my other two clips rather unimaginatively named Main 2 and B-Roll 3. So the primary camera is the Main 2 camera, and the uh, camera I'm going to intercut with is called the B-Roll 3 camera. I'm going to go ahead and bring Main 2 down. Now what I've done prior to starting the video here is I've got these roughly aligned to where they're supposed to be. But I'm going to go ahead and start right now working with the Main 2. The first step in the process is to go ahead and put the transition in that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a crossfade. So I'm going to bring down a, the crossfade transition, get that set up the way I like it, and there we go. The very next step is to enable the sound mixer right down here. Click on that icon, turn on the sound mixer, and this will take a little time to display the wave data for these various clips. Okay, I've got all three of the clips showing their audio waveforms, and they're a little bit all over the map. You see that the uh, main clip has got this big, thick audio waveform right there, and the overlay clip has got something very similar. Now, as it turns out, on my audio clip, this is that same sound, and it's ending way over here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move it so that it lines up up here. And at the moment, it's looking uh, like I still have to take it a little bit more to the left. So I'm going to go a little bit more to the left. This will all get more precise in a moment. Okay, that's actually looking pretty darn good. But uh, we won't know for sure exactly how good until we expand the timeline and take a look at that. And I'm thinking that that is actually pretty darn close. So I am going to move this over a little bit more. It looks like I may be about a frame off at this point. So what I like to do now is I like to play it a little bit. Now I've got three audios all engaged, all ready to play. And if they are not exactly overlined, I'll get some significant reverb or echo kind of sounds. So let's see what I get. That actually seemed to be very, very well timed. So I got kind of lucky at my first attempt at uh, trying to synchronize these three. Now, now that I have them synchronized, the thing to do is to turn the audio off on both the main track and on the overlay track. Now to do that, you click on the main track, do a right mouse click, and hit the mute. Same thing with the overlay, do a left mouse click to uh, highlight it, and then come up and do a right mouse click and click on mute. So now those two are muted, and all that remains, as far as audio is concerned, is my audio track that I brought in separately. Now you'll notice here that I have a window of the overlay track on the screen. I'll take care of that in just a moment. Okay, that actually, so far, looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the sound mixer. 
Now the box is highlighted. I'm going to do a right mouse click and click on Fit to Screen. And I'm going to take the left edge and I'm going to drag that over to the right so it's out of the way. And now I'm going to play it and we'll see what it's like with the main video track and the audio track, the separate audio track. Now I don't like this woman coming across, so I think at this point I'm going to go and have my uh, overlay track to hide this uh, problem here that I have with the main track. Now because of the crossfade, the crossfade causes the main audio to fade in. Now of course I have muted my main audio, so there is no main audio, but the viewer doesn't know that. So I'm going to do a fade in on my audio track. I'm going to come over here to the options panel, see my options, and this is the fade in button. I'm going to click on the fade in button. So now the audio is going to fade in just as if it was fading in because of the crossfade. And that starts a little tighter. So we're going to see when this woman walks across. She's getting up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this in there. And that's going to completely block that out. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I have so far. I'm going to send it back to the beginning, uh, bring it here, and here we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight my overlay track, the B-roll track, do a right mouse click and I'm going to split the clip at that point. I'm going to highlight the right side of the clip and drag the left edge up. Now what I've done here is I'm on my B-roll camera, my overlay camera, up to this point and then at this point it switches back to the main camera, stays on the main camera until I get to this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and line this up so it's where I want it to be to match with the music and whatever is happening on the screen. Okay, now the little boy has decided that he's had enough of being a musician, so he's going to put the ball down and go back to his mom. And now we have another volunteer. So I'm going to wait on the main track. I'm going to keep the main track on the screen until we see the girl come up and get the ball. Okay, I'm going to move this a bit more. I think that's my point right there. Here you go. She's a, a good ball dropper. Okay, she's getting ready to drop the ball at this point. I'm going to go and cut the clip again, do a right mouse press, split the clip, drag the left edge of the clip over, and here we go. Let's see what we got. There you go. She drops the ball right on cue. And that is a demonstration of how you go ahead and do multi-camera editing using Corel's Video Studio. Again, I've got X4, not the latest version. Uh, X5 is the latest version. So uh, you can do multi-camera editing. Now, if you have three cameras, I would need one more overlay track, and you can set up an additional overlay track in X4, and you would simply do the same thing on the other overlay track. Keep in mind, that the higher your overlay track number, this is overlay track one, the higher the track number, that one has dominance over everything. So if you have an overlay track two, whatever you have showing on overlay track two is going to hide everything else. So you can use it to intercut between three cameras. You just have to plan it very carefully. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Bob Kovacs, and it took me a little while to learn this technique, but I've used it an awful lot. Thanks for watching.